on Friday at 10.30 Eastern Standard Time, the last buyer of NVIDIA shares got in. Authorities aren't sure if the buyer who top-ticked the market was covering a short or going long. They aren't releasing the name until they've been able to reach the next of kin. Am I kidding? I don't think so. How would you feel if you bought stock at 974 and six hours later, it's trading at 875? The Santa Clara Giant ended Friday down 5.5%, but off more than 10% from the intraday high. Is this the end of the bull market? Let's find out. Welcome to The Money Runner. I'm David Nelson. How do you hold on to a bull market with one hand, fight off the bears with the other, and at the same time, not lose sight of the exit, hoping to avoid a repeat of the mistakes you made during the dot-com bust 24 years ago this month? It's not easy. And you can bet both professional and retail investors are struggling with how to best position their portfolios in an emotional backdrop where half the players think a crash is just around the corner and the other half are convinced Stocks are going to Pluto. Look, I get it. How could NVIDIA add $2 trillion in market cap in just 16 months? No other company, not even Apple or Microsoft, has seen that level of acceleration. Friday's outside day on intense volume, that's a significant bump in the road. Regardless of what happens Monday, I expect shares to approach 800 the first line of defense. And worst case, over the next two months, maybe the 50-day moving average. The emotions that come to bear when traders see a massive intraday reversal is to use any strength to lighten up. Fast money hedge funds may get out altogether and lock in what has been the right of a lifetime. What should you do at home? Most of you should do nothing. If you have a position size that is in line with the S&P 500 or something close to that, take the pain. Portfolio managers and advisors will manage the position commensurate with their style. But if they've done their homework, most will see what I see. A company on the cutting edge of the most important investment theme in a generation. What did I do? I sold shares at the close Friday. Yeah, the AI bull cut exposure. Money runners have to be in front of the curve and make decisions on a more granular basis. We fight daily for basis points. I looked at the tape, did the math, and cut exposure from an overweight position to about 4.5% of assets, or just under market weight. And yes, I may have to go further. If I'm wrong, I won't be shy about increasing exposure, even if it's once again at an all-time high. Don't extrapolate this into the end of the bull market. Money will rotate, searching for greener pastures. While tech was down more than 1.8% Friday, financials, energy, real estate, and utilities were all green. Even in tech, one of the Magnificent Seven found its footing, ending its seven-day losing streak. Apple managed to close up better than 1%. Look, we know the challenges at Apple, they're in between product cycles, and to date, haven't established themselves as a meaningful player in AI. At 25 times earnings, a slow or no growth company is expensive. But then again, this is Apple. This is a trade for me. I bought shares, but I'll give this one very little room. Have we seen this movie? There are lots of examples. But I like to go back and look at Cisco during the heady days of the dot-com boom. A lot of traders and market pundits like to point to the similarities of the performance of Cisco in the 90s to NVIDIA today. Outside the fact that both were institutional favorites and loved by all, you'll find some big differences. 
first. Contrary to popular opinion, Cisco was up significantly more during the dot-com craze than NVIDIA over the same time period. One of my favorite market technicians and CNBC regular Carter Worth pointed out on Friday's Fast Money the following. Ten years before the dot-com peak, Cisco was trading at a split-adjusted basis of nine cents. Its peak was over $69, or better than a 77,000% return. That same math going back to 2014 gives NVIDIA shareholders a 21,000% return. At Friday's high, NVIDIA was trading at 39 times this year's earnings. At its peak, Cisco, 131 times. Like I said at the top, this month is the 24th anniversary of the dot-com bust. You have a lot of market pundits and traders calling the end of the bull market. And of course, eventually, they'll be right. Bull markets always end in tears, but as history has taught us, timing does matter. Don't make wholesale changes to your portfolio based on a single trading day. You can be tactical in your thinking, but all in or all out decisions are almost always wrong. If you're looking for a sign that the current investment theme has run its course and it's time to pull the ripcord, consider this. Let's compare the build out of the internet to today's rollout of artificial intelligence hardware and applications. While the birth of the internet can be traced back to academia and the military in the early 70s, it wasn't until 1993 when AOL launched its proprietary email services that the mania really started to build. The dot-com bust was a full seven years later. OpenAI launched ChatGPT in November 2022. Few noticed as we were still in the grips of a vicious bear market. Big Cap Tech, they've been investing in AI solutions for well over a decade. Check out my interview with Jeff Huber, co-founder of Triatomic Capital and former VP at Alphabet and head of Google X during the early days of machine learning. Arguably, the real excitement accelerated when Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella made the decision to up their investment in OpenAI by another $10 billion in January last year. All in, the retail excitement has only been running for a little more than a year. How long did it take your grandmother to start using email? My mom never did. If you're looking for an indicator to exit all your AI stocks, that may be it. When you see your aging aunt or uncle pouncing between ChatGPT and Alphabet's Gemini looking for the best large language model to learn more about quantum mechanics, that may be a signal the party's about to end. Until then, we're going to have to hold on to the bull as best we can. The key is, you have to stay in the game. Victory belongs to those who enter the arena. As always, this is the point where I have to ask for your support. It doesn't cost money, but it does cost you time. Subscribe here for the YouTube Money Runner podcast. And don't forget to go to my Substack Money Runner page. DC Nelson 123 at substack.com. Lots of extras, articles, charts, and all of my network appearances. Hope you can join us. Thanks for stopping by. I'm David Nelson, and this is The Money Runner. <laughs>